kind of like that monolith on the desert. And that's where the inspiration for this video came from. The Utah monolith was a metal pillar that stood in a red sandstone slot canyon in northern San Juan County, Utah. The pillar was 9.8 feet tall and made of metal sheets riveted together in a triangular prism. The identity of its makers and their objectives are currently unknown. So, clearly an avant-garde art piece, but a fun one, I think anyway. So I thought I'd do a mini build of one. For this build, you'll need a triangular strip of EVA foam found in some craft stores from a craft store something flat and preferably heavy for the base like wood sand i keep a supply close at all times to ward off darth vader black paint silver paint scissors razor pens or a box cutter first i cut it to a length of about nine and a half inches the sharper your blade the cleaner your cut will come out then i did a base coat of flat black I want to avoid covering the entire bottom of the monolith with paint because if you do, it'll interfere with the glue later on. Once I'd painted the side and a section of all the sides near the base, I skewered it in place and stuck it onto a piece of scrap foam and proceeded to paint the other sides. This is both to keep the monolith from gluing itself to the workbench when my paint dries and to keep the paint off of my hands, which is clearly a losing battle. Generally speaking, flat paint dries much faster than gloss, so I was able to apply the second layer on the same day. That's just to get all the spots that I missed on the first pass, because when the paint is wet, the glare and the uncovered white spots can sometimes be indistinguishable from each other. When the second coat dried, I did a layer of gloss black. This will make the silver pop, so to speak, and shine. Arguably, I could have done gloss black from the very beginning, but I'm almost out of flat black and I, I kind of want to use it up. Otherwise, it's going to sit in the can for a few months and coagulate and be horrible and useless. Really, the first coat, it's like, well, no one's going to see that anyway. It's just a base layer. So I painted that and let it dry overnight. When it dried, I used Silver Rub and Buff, which is a wax-based metallic finish, for the final coat. Now I was going to spray paint this with automotive chrome paint, or even Molotow chrome, because those are way shinier. But I'm noticing in the reference photos that the real ones are actually kind of dull. So, hence Rub and Buff. Not to mention a lot of prepping movie props for photography is fogging up reflective surfaces to avoid glare and camera reflections. You don't think it's gonna be a big deal until you spot the camera reflection on the shiny doorknob in the matrix. Somebody's out of work over that slip up. Typically for real metal or glass, they'll use a can of hairspray. So really I'm saving myself a lot of unnecessary work later. Oh, also Rub and Buff has a shelf life, so gotta use it up. That doesn't take much time at all to dry, but the base isn't done yet. Probably could have timed that better. So I'm gonna get to that. I'm just using a scrap piece Piece of wood because the EVA foam is reserved for all manner of sci-fi projects. <laughs> I know you guys are waiting for me to finish. I I'm on it, guys. I just needed a breather. Just built a TIE fighter for crying out loud. Let me do a mini DIY before going back into the breach. Also, it's less likely to warp over time. I traced the base and then smeared a whole bunch of school glue on it. Normally, I'd use a sponge brush, but I don't want to have to wring it out later. If you don't wash the glue out completely, then it'll solidify. I feel like an enormous amount of my mental energy is spent thinking up ways to avoid doing the dishes. I'm eating all my meals off of leftover paper plates from craft services. I tried to avoid the spot where I traced the monolith, but to be certain, I placed a piece of tape over that space. Then before the glue dried, I covered it over with sand, much to Anakin's dismay. I tried to spread it out evenly. We'll find out how well I did tomorrow morning. Cut to obsolete PowerPoint wipe. This is how I had a chance to dry overnight. Almost. So I went back and got those individual spots. You want to be careful not to glob it on, otherwise the globs will harden as these really obvious raised blobs. Then I covered the individual spots with sand. And now we wait. Now it's only been a couple hours, but I feel like having a pile of sand on top of it is causing it to dry a bit slowly. So, so I'm gonna dump off the excess. And now that there's just a very fine layer on there, should be able to finish this up later today as opposed to having to let it sit overnight for a second night. When it dried completely, I peeled off the tape and proceeded to glue the monolith to the base. All right, it's very important that I left that partially unpainted. I'm gonna use super glue because I think I can get away with it. Spoiler alert, I couldn't. So instead, I used hot glue, my arch nemesis. At least since the TIE Fighter build, anyway. Nope. I don't want the point where it connects to the base to be an obvious blob of hot glue. So as it cooled, I used my finger to smooth it out. Smooth, smooth, move. No, we don't need to do a second line read. That's fine. This is, this is all good. Amateurs like you do two takes. William Shakespeare does one take. 
and sobriety is optional. I don't recommend this because if you touch the glue too soon, you'll get severely burned. I think we've established that already. When it's solidified, I noticed the bottom of the monolith wasn't quite flush with the terrain, the base of it. Okay, now since hot glue has a lot of mass, I gotta cover that up with more hot glue. <laughs> Man, that's a callback. Does anybody even know what I'm talking about? That Gatling gun that I did 10 years ago? No? It's been stuck just below 400,000 views for nearly that whole time. It's got 398 and stopped. I'm, I've gone off the rails here. All right, moving on. I applied more hot glue to the base and repeated the smoothing process, which will give the impression that the monolith is dug into the ground a bit. Before the hot glue was totally cool, I tried throwing sand onto it so that it would stick to the surface. My timing wasn't perfect, so it didn't really work, and I had to go back and do some more touch-ups with white school glue. Hot glue will dry pretty quickly on um, a really solid surface, like glass or metal or stone, and sand is kind of glass and stone, so it quickly absorbs and disperses the heat. Now, hopefully, I just threw that sand on there before it totally cooled. But again, in this process, I gotta wait like five minutes in between each uh, application. Also, I'm gonna say you guys might wanna use a base that is not so obviously wood. It won't really matter for my purposes that you can see the wood grain from this angle because I'm gonna photograph it from the side and it's all gonna blend together. But again, if you wanna avoid that altogether, you can use just a lighter colored wood or there's even like a, like a beige EPS foam that would work. There's all sorts of options out there. And that's how you make a monolith. Now you can manipulate the evolution of monkeys because that worked out so well the first time around. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I wanna real quick thank my patrons whose support makes these videos possible. This video was actually a freebie for them because I did this build using only leftover materials from previous patron funded projects, such as the ones you're seeing right now. I think these materials were specifically from the Xenomorph, Umbrella Academy Fish Guy, and TIE Fighter builds. And uh, I think the sand was from a cutaway from the Jedi training helmet build? I don't even know. It's all a jumble in my head. But getting right back to it, my main tutorial videos are typically much more elaborate and every once in a while I'm able to figure out a way to cobble together the scraps from several of those builds to do a fun little mini build such as this. If you'd like to join the patrons to support the much more elaborate builds, there's a link in the video description down below. Patrons get early ad-free access to the uploads and every little bit helps by allowing me to increase the quality and functionality of the props, as well as the production value of these videos. All right, thanks for watching. Happy crafting. See you later.